Have you ever had a decor project that meant a lot more to you than just decorating? This sofa upholstery project is meaningful to me because the sofa belonged to my beloved grandparents and was part of my life since I can remember. In this video, Vintage Sofa Upholstery of a Family Heirloom, I show you the process of selecting fabric and finishes and how the project progressed over two years. I completed the work myself and took a long break when I was about 75% of the way through the project. When my grandparents passed away 10 years ago, I was given this sofa. I remember feeling a responsibility to respectfully care for it because it represented so much to me. My grandparents had a beautifully decorated home where extended family would gather every Christmas, summer, and Easter. My grandmother had a wonderful sense of style. I always loved this sofa. The fabric on the sofa was a softly striped and patterned light green heavyweight upholstery material. It had not been upholstered during my lifetime, so it was at least 45 years old. It had faded and thinned irregularly, and the cushions were flanned and thin. Sadly, our cat was drawn to scratching it which caused further damage. Style-wise, it didn't quite work with my more casual decor. About two years ago, my youngest son started grade one, and I had a little more time on my hands after completing the refresh of the other elements in our living room. For the board and band tutorial, click here. And for the painted piano tutorial, click here. Although I looked into getting the sofa professionally upholstered, it was completely out of our budget. I purchased the fabric and watched a lot of videos about your full story. I highly recommend watching numerous videos, as it's definitely the best free way to learn upholstery skills. When I was 70% ready, I jumped in and started ripping off the old fabric. I always start projects before I'm 100% ready because I know I'll never start otherwise. Every time I ran into a snag, I take a break, sometimes for weeks or months, and watch additional videos. I think the first step in the vintage sofa upholstery process is to determine if a piece of furniture is worth the expense of upholstery. To do this, you'll likely want to call a professional and get an estimate. You can often obtain a free estimate via email to get a ballpark figure. Look into local upholstery shops for more information. Vintage pieces are often handmade, have higher quality materials, like a hardwood frame, better workmanship, and were built to last a lifetime. For these reasons, they often make excellent candidates for youthful straight. However, they can pose a few unique challenges. They are older and may have suffered structural damage over the years. This can be an added complication and expense to correct. You may also find that they are so well made that they may be difficult to deconstruct. I found the removal of the upholstery staples to be very difficult. There were several hundred to remove and they were all practically cemented in the tough old hardwood. It's pretty important to choose the correct fabric weight. Most fabric stores sell upholstery weight fabric. Upholstery fabric is some of the thickest and sturdiest fabric. You'll want at least a medium weight fabric for sofa upholstery. You'll also want to choose a fabric with a high rub test rating. In a rub test, the fabric is subjected to a high number of rubs to see how it wears after prolonged use. The more your sofa will be used, for example, daily in a TV room versus less frequently in a formal living room, the higher the rub test rating you will want. The most common fabrics for upholstery include con, linen, blends, and synthetics. Con and con blends come in a variety of finishes, from soft brush con to plush velvet to sturdy canvas and denim. Note that natural materials tend to be a bit more expensive and con, in particular, has a tendency to fade over time, especially in a sunny room. My rule of thumb is to go for a neutral solid color for sofas. This is even more true for pieces you take the time and effort to you fulster as you're most likely planning on having them for a long time. Upholstery tip you will likely tire of a pattern after 5-10 years, but your upholstery job could last 15-30 years, so it's best to go neutral. I decide on a heavyweight 100% Belgian linen in a natural beige color. This fabric was definitely a splurge, but I purchased it at a discount fabric store. Unfortunately, they're no longer in business. First, think of the theme style you want to evoke. For me it was a relaxed French country feel, that natural linen look. The lines of my sofa are French in style, so it also would have been appropriate to choose a more formal French style fabric. If you're working with a professional upholsterer or are a very talented dyer, you may consider changing the shape of your sofa. For example, you might make a rounded back sofa straight or vice versa. The shape changes I made were subtle adding extra padding to the back so it could act as a tight back sofa without the need for back cushions, adding padding to the sofa sides to give it a curvier silhouette and changing the cushion configuration. Some sofas, particularly vintage ones, have wood trim on the armrests, legs, skirt, or back, 
Keep in mind that you can sometimes upholster over excess wood trim with padding and fabric. Initially, I had wanted to strip and stain the wood trim. However, after stripping the wood, during my attempt at staining, I noticed that the wood took the stain very irregularly. There are all kinds of trim used to cover upholstery staples and the edges where the fabric meets the wood trim. Examples include piping, flat braid, fin jassel trim, scallop trim, and more elaborate trim. Nail heads can also be added to a simple fabric trim using decorative upholstery tacks. Better Homes and Gardens nicely outlines the various types of trim. I find this handy yardage calculator to be very useful, at least as a first estimate. If you don't care to do a more detailed calculation, then add an additional 25-30% material. Upholstery tip I find it useful to create a 3D drawing of the pieces I plan to upholster I. Sofa body broken into back, seat back, seat base, armrests, sides, and skirt, well as seat cushions and back cushions. Then, estimate the amount of fabric required for each piece. Allow extra material for piping. See matching and limitations in fabric width. This allows you to be able to replace the damaged piece rather than having to ufoster the entire piece. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Keep watching and stay with us subscribing to this channel. Have a great day.